<clears throat> Good morning. I'm sorry about the phone flip there. I had to start over. It slipped out of the gimbal. Today I asked you for a special prayer. Here in Dukenaltum there will be the 10th annual Women's Encounter, which brings together people of very different backgrounds. And it's in the month when women are honored in March. Usually we've had it at the beginning of March this last year and this year. Um, it's at the end of March for practical organizational reasons. And so this is a, a great, uh, a great day, a great day of blessing. Women are delighted to have this day. And the theme or the, the headline is Her Voice. So there will be a couple of talks and there's going to be a concert. And there's a hapsi card set up in there. And wonderfully skilled musicians and singers they're going to perform Susanna in the evening at the close of the day, in the late afternoon. So we pray that it will be a very blessed occasion for everybody. Thanks be to God, I'm doing a bit better today for all of you who are all concerned. Thank you for your prayers. There's a great saying in Germany that I learned that you get, when you get a cold, a cold lasts nine days. Three days coming, three days with you, and three days going. It's kind of a proverbial saying, you know. And then the next line is, colds last nine days with medicine. And colds last nine days without medicine. A little streamlet is a lovely thing, isn't it? With running water. We have all the rivers of the earth. The Mississippi and the Rio Grande and the Nile and our little Jordan here, the Jordan River. Today there's a great hope and promise in Ezekiel about the renewal of the covenant. There shall no longer be two kingdoms. So we go way back centuries before Ezekiel and we have David and Solomon. And already in Solomon's reign, <coughs> you can see some cracks in the structure because of the weaknesses, the human weaknesses of Solomon. I, I read a line yesterday, I think, or the day before, I forget. It was one of those things you see in a fleeting moment, just uploading the, the Facebook video in the morning or editing it. And it was from a fellow who actually, who's actually here in, I think he's based in England, Bear Grills. He's a film producer, and I was blessed to work with him on a film that should be coming out now about, um, about Jesus. It's amazing, all the artists come back to treat Jesus, you know. So uh, the saying that's attributed to him that I just saw was a small little, it's a proverbial saying. And he says, uh, we should only spend a very short time on the mountaintops, on the peaks, on the summit. And that when we, our growth really happens climbing up from the depths of the valleys. And if we look at human history, it's a great line. And then you see Solomon, 
he arrived easily on the throne, relatively speaking. He had to do some political finagling because he would have been ousted. And But he was sitting 40 years comfortably on the tr throne. And if power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, then this line of beer grills is quite the quite the uh, well expressed insight. <coughs> that we do better when we're struggling. We become more humble, more realistic more reliant on God. So here we have the Ganges or the... It's funny, I forgot all the names of all the rivers of so many countries that I knew in the end of grade school. We learned all that in grade school. And our grade school is going to be 150 years old this year. Isn't that amazing? 150 years old, a two-roomed, two-classroomed little building where even my grandparents went to school. So they invited me to come home for the, the celebration. And we learned all those little things at school, you know, all the rivers of the countries, the mountains. I have to go back and look at them again. <coughs> So the break came into the kingdom right after Solomon. After all his glory, all his wisdom, all his wealth, all his fame. And humans, it's hard for us to maintain the peaks. Climbing is where we grow. The way of the cross, the trials, the sufferings, the challenges. Where we grow in resilience, where we grow virtue but Ezekiel is promising uh, uh, from the time of exile that God will not God doesn't want two kingdoms and he doesn't want 10,000 churches God wants one kingdom and one shepherd it's amazing this is God's, God's uh, God is one and his human family are one. We are one, one people, one family, made in his image and likeness. And you see, this is all undergirding in all the whole vision also of Ezekiel. And there will be one kingdom. The people of salvation have to be one. They can't be splintered in a thousand pieces or even in two pieces. And it's very hard for us human beings to handle that to handle other people, to handle people, to handle differences, to handle conflicts. We talked a bit about that yesterday. But Ezekiel has this promise that God wants. God's going forward. God's not giving up. And he will bring his people together. And they will be one, one people. And he will give them a new covenant. There's a very interesting commentary by Brand Petrie. Brent Petrie on the biblical roots of the Eucharist. A wonderful book. You could probably find some videotapes, video on YouTube with him, Brent Petrie. And <coughs> it's um, very interesting to see uh, that the people at the time of Jesus were actually expecting a spiritual Messiah. Okay, there were lots of people that wanted the material Messiah, the ones that can make it happen with politics, with human maneuvering, with power, with money, with guns, with war, with weapons, with revolution, with swords. But there are also people who are looking for the spiritual Messiah. And you see, that has to be rooted in, in the reality of prophecies like Isaiah, like Ezekiel, <coughs> and Jeremiah, and Isaiah. I mean, they're all coming from God. So uh, it's going out with some bait, I think, for the fish. And now 
another little tent here. Bokotov. So what a beautiful thing, father son moment here at the Sea of Galilee. Fishing. Look at this embankment of just pure shells. And it's moved in further since we saw the last time. <coughs> Actually, this is a sign. Look at this piece of furniture here, which I don't understand that these things happen, but anyway, it's here. And you see, that's a chair that's sitting down and this whole embankment has come in and buried it. In just one storm, you know? Isn't that amazing? In just one storm. It's the fishing gear. And there's a fisherman over on the lift out there in his boat. All the tricks to try to draw the fish closer. This is a great promise. The Lord will shepherd his people. This is our psalm. That's, that's God's heart. God's heart is to shepherd his people. And not to leave us abandoned. We have to read that line right here. Look at this here. I will make them one nation upon the land and the mountains of Israel. And here we have Mount Arbel. And there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall there be two nations. <coughs> My servant David, the son of David, shall be prince over them. And there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They should live on it forever, forever, forever. You see, this is a kingdom that overcomes death. This is an eternal kingdom. This is a spiritual kingdom. This is not a material kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. <coughs> I will be their God and they shall be my people. And there we have in Jeremiah, the Psalm text is from Jeremiah. So you have these canticles in the different books of the Bible and they're like Psalms. And that's what we have today, Jeremiah 31. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Now we have a very difficult passage in the gospel at the end of the resurrection story of Lazarus, Caiaphas says it's better for one person to die for the people. It's a very powerful word. Hey, we can't walk here any further, look. Well, we can walk down a little bit. Let's go down here and enjoy it. It's closed in now here. We used to be able to walk out there five or six meters further just this past year, this past winter, or late summer. All the new leaves. So Caiaphas says it's better for one person to die for the people. And an interesting point that Tim Gray made this morning in his commentary, it's on the Amen app from the Augustine Institute in Denver. He said that the God allows the office and blesses the office, even if the office holder is corrupt. 
And we have that famous little proverb, very well known, God writes straight with crooked lines. So in all the human brokenness, God issues grace through all the weak and limited human agents. We think of some parents that may have some very great limitations, and yet God can bless their children in a very powerful way. And to realize that, to turn to God and to let him bless others through us, despite our limitations and brokenness and weakness. Even if the holder of the office is broken and sometimes scandalous, nevertheless God can continue blessing the people through the offices he established for salvation, salvation history. And that's an important distinction. And I was thinking this morning in another line about Caiaphas. You know, he basically decreed that Jesus should die. And he was the head of the chosen people. And from our Christian perspective, obviously, there's no question that Jesus is the Messiah. And the head of the chosen people want, wants Jesus eliminated, neutralized, wiped out. The sooner, the better. And what's Jesus' attitude to him? Well, I would say that Jesus has a tremendous love for him and he wants to recover him. There's no hatred in Jesus' heart for Caiaphas. There may be a sense of frustration, a sense of disappointment, but there's a will to redeem because he's dear to his heart. How we have to grow and learn through the people who hurt us that they are dear to our heart, that they are family, they're not enemies. They need redemption. The great experience of parental love dealing with broken children. May this holy week that we're entering into be a great blessing for everybody. <coughs> uh, God bless you all. See you later, alligators. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs>